There wasn't a whole lot going on before we started working closely with them. Previously I'd say that there was a lack of awareness of OHS. There may have been maybe some posters about the place but not that much substance behind it. I am amazed at what they've been able to achieve. Mantra Group has accommodation all around Australia with three separate brands, Peppers, Break Free and Mantra Hotels. We have around 3,300 team members. It was a whole load of different hotels coming together, so they did have their own little culture. Some had a bit of an OHS background, um, some may have had some policies and some may have had nothing whatsoever. Previously, Mantra didn't have a great grasp on what sorts of injuries were occurring in their workplace. We would certainly touch base with them during the management of a claim, but progressing into looking at identifying any injury trends and keeping up to date with what was happening on a particular claim um, wasn't occurring to the degree that it is now. What we really started with was we had to take records of what incidents were occurring, where we were having injuries and we really saw that obviously there was a lot of manual handling injuries and over 50% were from housekeeping. We certainly see a lot of back injuries from those manual tasks from our housekeepers who were bending continually throughout the day making beds and manoeuvring trolleys but also our maintenance staff so when there are events on there's a lot of furniture that needs placing but also you see shoulder injuries intermingled with the back injuries as well. So from that we realised we really needed to look at the housekeeping tasks and how we were managing them. We got some external ergonomists, physiotherapists, to look at not only what's the most optimal way of performing the tasks, but what was going to be the practical way as well. Because there's no good coming in and saying, this is how you have to do it strictly and know that it's not something that's going to be followed. Well, what we found was that with the training of the team members was that they were really quite good at training them what they had to do with the end product, but the actual training of how to do it wasn't actually performed that well. So we introduced a bit of a program and some checklists with some diagrams just really to say this is how we expect you to manage this sort of task or this is how it can minimise the risk. When we have housekeeping training sessions, we show a team member how to do it slowly. It's a one-on-one -on -one approach where you show a team member, I'll do it first, I'll show you what it looks like, now you have a go. We found within the business there were some fairly, not archaic, but some tools that had been used for years within housekeeping and what we found was there is a lot of equipment that's out there that could probably assist a lot better. I've had jobs where you had to cart the bucket full of water into each room. There is some more modern types of mops that can be more effective and also easier to use ergonomically. They're the best mops I've ever worked with. We don't have to have a bucket or anything. The dusting. Dusting's definitely changed. You just cart around an old duster. People were using things such as coat hangers to wipe the top of cupboards with a rag. So there is some bendable tools, extendable as well, that you can use to obviously make that job easier. In some areas they would have had outdated trolleys that were really just designed to fit everything that they needed for the day on. We've looked at some trolleys that are more purpose built for what they're doing. They are really manoeuvrable and not too heavy and all the shelving options are really good. The room attendants have a vacuum cleaners with adjustable poles so that they can adjust them to their height. You used to have to go around and plug it in all over the place but now they're gigantic cords. You should just have to bend down once and plug it in the wall instead of bending down, taking it out, bending down, taking it out. For even regional areas we've got the OHS champions at property so that they can be the focal point for the team members to discuss their OHS issues. We don't have a formal OHS committee but what we do have is what we call a SWAT and we'll have regional SWAT meetings or safe work action teams just to ensure that the properties can sort of talk to each other about how they're managing some of the issues that are coming up. We want to create this environment where there can be a free exchange of ideas 
where people can feel totally safe in discussing safety issues. Involving senior management is obviously a key because if it doesn't come from the top then it's not reinforced and it will soon drop away. It is a key um, target and a key performance indicator for all managers that they are proactive in their management of occupational health and safety. Through daily briefings, your casual conversations with staff, it needs to be added to performance reviews. So it'll be constantly part of your daily talk. When I came in, workers' compensation was seen as an administrative task. The guys were very good at getting the paperwork in and getting the claim lodged, but there was not a lot of management after that. So uh, one thing we did introduce here was to ensure that it's more than that, that you need to speak to the injured worker, you need to have a plan in place, and you need to see what you can do about getting, uh, getting the team members back to work as soon as possible. Now Mantra have certainly implemented a lot of strategies where they touch base with WorkCover's customer advisor several times a week. They regularly review cases so that they know exactly where each of their employees is at, no matter what location they are. We also work with them to set up those provider relationships. I speak to my team members in checking on their progress and how they're doing and feeding that information back to the head office. Yeah, okay. We do need to show the love. Our team members need to feel the love, um, otherwise, yeah, things can go a bit belly up. So you really need to support them through it all so that they then are happy to come back. We try to establish really good relationships with the medical providers and the physiotherapy providers. Those medical providers have been out onto Mantra's premises and know what sorts of suitable duties are available, so they can set up a return to work right from that very first initial consultation. It's really helped because then they know the business, they know that we can accommodate duties and then we're not just um, sticking them in a small room and having them I don't know, tear sugar packets or something, I don't know. If you set up a relationship with a local provider who can come out and visit your workplace and see what duties are available, what types of injuries that they might see, then when an injury does occur and someone's seen for an appointment, they know immediately how it's occurred and what type of suitable duties that that person will be able to return to. Getting them back to suitable duties is really vital. To have a plan in place so that there's something for everyone to focus on. It is about thinking about what an injured worker can do rather than focusing on what they can't do. So what we do, we get them in a small room and get them to empty small sugar packets into a bigger bowl. <laughs> What we really try to do is make sure the tasks are meaningful. For example, if someone's having trouble bending or getting low, it may be just cleaning at bench height, it may be light dusting, or if we can't even get them in the cleaning environment, it may be more administration work with a bit of a mix gradually getting back to cleaning. If we were to look at the health benefits of returning to work, then the longer someone is off work, the less likely they are to return. I know my department's very social. They get used to the habit of getting up and going to work and feeling like they're contributing, otherwise they're going to feel like they're not part of the department anymore, they're something separate, you know, they're, they're not part of the team. And so we'd need to get them back at work so they can reintegrate back in with that team again. Oh, I was off work too long. My motivation would go down, I know that. Just like to be around people. Some businesses may think, oh well I can't use this team member till they're 100% and I don't want to see them till they come back. What they don't realise is that it can impact in the long term, not just to the injured worker but to the business as well. And that's why they need to look at the claim and look at the injured worker and assist where they can. What we can see from the statistics is that we've definitely managed to decrease some of the incidents coming through. We've reduced open claims in the last two years by around about 40%. We've seen at least a 10% increase in their stay at work rate, so we're certainly seeing the benefits of keeping people at work. And we've also seen high return to work rates for Mantra. So when we are helping someone through the rehabilitation process, 98% of the time, if not more than that, an injured worker is returning to work. I'd like to think that safety has become second nature to my team. Now we see a close-knit team who know what's going on with all of their injured employees across the different locations, but they're also working together with WorkCover's customer advisor on looking at 
where we can prevent injuries occurring and reduce our claims costs and claims experience further. No, we're not stopping here. We're looking to reinforce some of the things we've put in place now, but also seeing what else we can do. Just reanalyzing where we currently sit uh, and seeing where we need to focus and develop further. If I would have an employer take away something from Mantra's story, it would be to get involved, get to know what's going on within your business in terms of injury prevention, but also injury management, and work with WorkCover to help someone return to work. It's not that hard. You really just have to look at the big picture and put some simple steps in place and just take one step at a time and you can make a difference. Where I'd like to be is where a work cover Queensland, um, just sitting there, not having to do anything. That'd be good. <laughs>